Good morning. My name is Elizabeth Crowley, and I am the chair of the Fire and Criminal Justice Services Committee. Today, this committee will be conducting a vote on three bills related to the Department of Correction. I fully support all of these bills, and I'm proud that this council will soon pass all three of these bills into law. The overwhelming majority of inmates in DOC custody are pre-trial detainees, and less than 10% of the detainees will be sentenced to state prison. The rest will be released back into our city streets, and that is why it is so important that we give these inmates, all of whom are legally presumed innocent, the same opportunity and some opportunity to better their lives. So that is why, so that when they are released, they have some, a better chance uh, to succeed. We also know that idle time is correlated with violence, so giving these inmates something productive, productive to do can also curb the troubling rise of violence on Rikers Island. These same principles apply to the approximately 13% of inmates who are sentenced. They too deserve meaningful opportunities to reform their lives. The three bills this committee will be voting on today addresses issues for both pre-trial detainees and sentenced inmates and will establish minimum standards and transparency for inmate programming, discharge planning, and education. I will address these bills numerically starting with intro 1013A. Sponsored by Councilmember Corey Johnson, the bill addresses discharge planning, which is the process by which inmates are guided towards appropriate programming and service upon, services upon their release. This bill would mandate that meaningful discharge planning be provided to any inmate sentenced to more than 30 days in DOC custody. This will ensure that those being released to our city are given more than a metro card. They are given a genuine opportunity to succeed. Intro 1148A is sponsored by Council Member Drum. This bill addresses those inmates who are provided educational services by the Department of Education, which includes 16 and 17 year olds for whom education is mandatory, and inmates 18 to 21 years old for whom the DOE provides optional education programming. The bill requires a comprehensive report on programming for each school year, ensuring transparency for this critical issue. Intro 1348A is sponsored by Councilmember Carnegie. This bill ensures that DOC provides all inmates in DOC custody for more than 10 days with a minimum of five hours per day of programming, including both pre-trial detainees and sentenced inmates. The types of programming include any structural services, including vocational training, counseling, or programming addressing drug dependencies or mental health issues. By codifying a baseline of five hours of programming for each inmate, this bill will ensure that the recent gains the DOC has made in providing inmate programming will be permanent. I look forward to voting to pass these bills through this committee today. I want to thank the council members who sponsored the bills who are here today uh, uh, to talk about their important bills. And uh, I'd like to first recognize Council Member Drum to speak on 1148A. And thank you, Chair Crowley, for working with me on another measure aimed at reforming our city's jails. Intro 1148A represents a significant step toward helping to address the educational crisis of young people in jails. It has been estimated that 80% of those entering Rikers Island do not have a high school diploma or its equivalent. Education, of course, has a tremendous impact on improving post-release outcomes. Through investigative visits to Rikers Island conducted by my colleagues and me, as well as the testimony gathered at the committee hearing, we were able to gain a better understanding of the challenges of teaching and learning in this extreme setting. And, and let me just also say, when one of my first visits to Rikers, I remember entering the uh, solitary confinement cell of a 16-year-old um, who uh, the extent of his education was a Xerox sheet that was placed under the door for him to complete. Um, and that was the extent of the education that that child, 16 years old, was going to receive for the day. Uh, and so um, that's really one of the things that motivated me to really begin to look at it and address this issue. And, and to also highlight the issue, I want to share one particularly disturbing practice we learned about at the hearing, and that is the gassing of classrooms by corrections officers when they deem it necessary to restore order. This legislation focuses on transparency around several key data points. 
diplomas in high school equivalency, class size, physical education, special education, vocational programming, assaults and the use of force, as well as tracking students' progress after their release. We owe it to the young people who are in our jails to provide the best possible education, and so I encourage all my colleagues who sit on this committee to vote in favor of intro 1148A. Again, thank you very much. Thank you, Council Member Drum. Now I'd like to recognize Council Member Cornegie to speak on intro 1348A. Uh, I've had the pleasure of working on Rikers Island um, as a assistant director of the social services and also assistant director of substance abuse. And intro 1348A, which will mandate much needed programming to persons detained or incarcerated on Rikers Island for a period exceeding 10 days. As you know, Rikers Island houses roughly 10,000 persons on a daily basis with about 77,000 passing through the facility in total each year. Of those, roughly 85% have not been convicted of a crime. Unfortunately, as of today, individuals merely awaiting trial at Rikers Island often spend months or even years on Rikers Island without access to structured services like vocational training, mm -hmm. counseling, cognitive behavioral therapy, addressing drug dependencies, etc. Too often, these long stays in the confines of Rikers lead to tragedies. We should all know, we should all by now be aware of the story of Khalif Browder, a young man who maintaining his innocence, awaiting trial on Rikers Island for three years. Much of Khalif Browder's time on Rikers was spent in solitary confinement, and all of his time was spent without access to services that may have saved his life. In addition to possibly saving lives, programming for persons detained at Rikers for long periods of time mandated by intro 1348A provides opportunities for them that have been shown to reduce the chances they end up in jail again or, re or re just reduce recidivism. Whether it be reducing an individual's dependency on drugs or teaching them a skill that they can use to find employment upon release. Ensuring the individuals on Rikers Island have access to the services they need is paramount to improving the outcomes of our criminal justice system. I thank the 14 council members who've joined me as sponsors of this bill and urge the committee to vote in favor of this legislation. Thank you. I now ask the committee clerk to take the roll call on the vote. William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on fire and criminal justice services. All items are coupled. Chair Crowley. I vote aye on all. And congratulations to council member Cornegie, Drum, and Johnson. Cabrera. Aye on all. Lanceman. Aye. By vote of three in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, all items have been adopted by the committee. We'll keep the vote open for the next half hour. Thank you. <laughs>